All right, match five on the play. And this hand is capable. Turn one Swift Water Cliffs into turn two counter spell. All right, play the Cliffs, pass the turn. Preordain. Top and top of Preordain. Pass the turn. Save this Radiant Fountain. And they pass again. We might be in the mirror match here. And there's a swamp. All right. I'm not going to play this deep analysis yet. Wait till I can hold up and counter spell at the same time. Seagate Oracle. I'll exclude that. This is probably the Demir Flicker deck, or as I called it, Demir Handlock, and everyone got up in arms about. All right. I could hold up and counter spell here. I really want to hold up and counterspell because they could play Mold Drifter. If I don't, they could just go untap land in the Mold Drifter. Uh, the problem with that is they don't have a land in hand or they would have played it last turn, which means they have to have Mold Drifter in hand and top deck exactly Islander Swamp. So I think I'm just going to take the greedy play, cast Deep Analysis, try to draw into a land. All right, no lands. Ish. Dual shot's not going to do much. I'll get rid of it. We have a Seagate Oracle, okay. And they unearth another Seagate Oracle. And I'll go ahead and kill one of these, why not? All right, pieces of the puzzle time? I think so. I only have two choices, so I'll take them. And might as well flame slash this, stop it from attacking me. Seagate Oracle. Should I counter spell or should I not? I think I can let that resolve. And they pass. Cycle this. Draw two with this if they don't want to counterspell it. All right, drew a flurry of horns. Triple counterspell, triple lightning bolt, flurry of horns. Normally, this would be an excellent hand. However, this is not a normal deck that we're going up against. All right, they're going to make their tittering rats resolve. They don't need to have anything at all to flicker, so these can go away. And we even have a counter spell up to protect them. Or rather, to protect ourselves from a mole drifter. It's more scary. Uh, Chittering Rats. They already played an island, so they can't also play Mold Drifter this turn, so for that reason I'm just going to counterspell this. They countered back. We 
we get to attack. Flashback, the deep analysis. Pieces of the puzzle, okay. All right, five whole choices. Flurry of Horns is important for winning. They have lots of removal spells that can remove these. Counterspell is also pretty important. Dispel is nice. I think I'll take one Counterspell and one Flurry of Horns. I think I'm okay with one Flurry of Horns being gone forever. Not going to flash back the other deep analysis. I'd rather hold open Counterspell. Archaeomancer. So this can give back Counterspell, Unearth for a Seagate Oracle, a lot of good stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and make them fight over this if they want it. They let us counter it. Now they use a removal spell, probably. Oh, it's Chittering Rats. Okay. Boop. And now I can go five plus counter spell. I can't deep analysis and hold open both. Unless I draw an untapped land, so I'm not going to get greedy. I'll just save the deep analysis. Chainer's Edict. Okay, I can let one Chainer's Edict resolve. I'll save my counter spell for something scarier. And they finally gave me the Mole Drifter. Thank you! Now they have to chump block, and if I draw removal, they lose. Flame Slash. That's game. Boop. Alright, excellent. On to sideboarding. So we want our Pyroblasts for countering Mole Drifters, and Seagate Oracles, and Ghostly Flickers, and Preordains and Ponders, potentially. Do I want to sideboard out Flurry for Jace's Erasure? I believe I do. I think they just have too much removal available to them, even though we didn't really see much of it that time. Dual Shot is pretty bad here. And I have two more cards I need to cut. I think I'm going to cut one piece of the puzzle and one Logic Knot. Pieces doesn't trigger my Erasure. Logic Knot is good, but they might be bringing in Graveyard Hate, so it might get a little bit worse. And we'll submit like this. Alright, this hand is awesome, so we'll keep it. I'd prefer this deep analysis to be a land, but if we can go turn 2 erasure, turn 3 erasure, and they don't get too quick of a start, then we'll be doing very well. Preordain goes top top. Go ahead and get one of these erasures down as early as possible. Miss drawing lands twice in a row, so hopefully we'll draw it this turn. No Seagate Oracle or Chittering Rats there. Means they're probably holding open counter spell. So I could play Erasure and just let them counter spell it. And get a counter spell out of their hand. I think I'm gonna do that. I think they'll counter this if I play it because they're scared of it. They realize it's my win condition now. If it doesn't resolve, it's great. If it does resolve, it's fine. And they just pass. Okay. That's really weird. They just have nothing to do. They missed their land drop on turn four, and they didn't counter my Jace's Erasure. And now I've drawn an island, and I get to hold up and exclude. So hopefully they go swamp chittering rats here. No, nope, nothing. Discard the hand size, they get rid of a deep analysis, okay. Chainer's Edict goes in the bin. I could deep analysis myself if I wanted to, or I can hold up and exclude some more. I'll wait. Although, actually, I take that back. I think I'm going to deep analysis now. If they manage to resolve a Seagate Oracle or a Children Rats, I'm not that afraid. Um, if they resolve a Mold Drifter, it'd be really bad. So I want to have Exclude open for the Mold Drifter turn, but they can't play Mold Drifter next turn since they're stuck on three lands at the moment. 
The worst thing for me is if I tap out for deep analysis and they go for Archeomancer and they get back like a counter spell, that'd be pretty annoying. But then I get to kill their Archeomancer and they don't get to flicker it until they find their Reaping the Graves. So yeah, here we go, deep analysis. All right, they don't counter it, so we get some triggers. All right, we flip over to their aqueducts. That's great. We don't hit any, hit any lands, which is annoying. In fact, we've hit no creatures at all yet, which is good if they have an unearth stuck in their hand. But it's kind of bad since we're now they have a higher concentration of creatures in their hand and deck. All right, they're flashing back deep analysis to try to find a land. And they find a backwater. Now they're going to have to discard two cards to hand size, though. They preordain. Top and top of preordain. Discard a Doom Blade. And a Hydroblast. Wow, their hand must be really good if they're discarding Hydroblast. We flip over a Doom Blade. Well, I'm going to preordain into a land, hopefully. Deep analysis is good. Should I put it on top? It's good, but I'd rather have counter spells. I'm going to get rid of it. And I can play Jace's Erasure and hold up in Pyroblast, or I can hold up and exclude Pyroblast. And I think I'd rather hold up and exclude Pyroblast. If they just go land Mold Drifter here and I don't need the Pyroblast in addition to the exclude, then it's kind of annoying since then I could have gotten Erasure into Pyroblast. But if they play 3 drop and try to protect it, then I can get a good blowout. If they go Cheddaring Rats Counterspell or Seagate Oracle Counterspell. Or one of those plus Dispel. Alright, there's the Cheddaring Rats. I exclude it, they counter back, and then I Pyroblast. Boop. And instead of them getting a two for one, I get a two for one and I get to mill them. I have a lot of removal in hand I don't need. Play my fountain. Play my third of these. Play my deep analysis flashback. Six triggers. Take them out of the 20 cards in the library. Pretty sure they don't have any bounce or disenchant effect. And they conceded. Well, we only went 2 3 overall, but we smashed the deck from the last plane popper, the blue black handlock or blue black flicker deck. Many thanks to Martin Lovebow for 5 0 in with the deck so that we could see it published and try it ourselves. As you can hopefully see, it's extremely hard to play, and I definitely didn't play it optimally. But it's a great deck to pick up if you like control decks and you're in for a bit of a challenge. Don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed these videos. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.